What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Astral Sorcery. So today we are going to be going over the Spectral Relay, which is a multi-block structure that I guess it's technically a multi-block at least. It's a lot less complicated than most of the ones you've probably set up before in modded Minecraft, but regardless, it takes multiple blocks to actually function, so we can still call it that. But either way, it is going to allow us to harness additional starlight at night and add it to our current starlight crafting setup. Now last episode we upgraded our luminous crafting table to the starlight crafting altar and right now is a perfect example of this considering it is basically midnight but if we look in here we are still not at maximum starlight levels we're almost there like 95 percent of the way there but we are still not full on that and this is in a situation where our setup is in the most densely concentrated area of starlight that you can possibly find. The Fosic field is so dense here, there's not a more concentrated option. And so a bunch of you will actually probably be in situations where you're in mod packs and you already had a base, you wanted to get into astral sorcery, and you had to run hundreds of blocks away from your base if you wanted to find a concentrated Fosic field like that. So you settled for an area where the environmental levels really aren't that high, and so you might be limited in what you can do. But thanks to the Spectral Relay, we can actually artificially increase the amount of starlight levels that our current setup will have, and that's great because it means, oh my gosh, and we are being joined by some of these phantoms which are super loud and super obnoxious. Okay, so those phantoms were super annoying. They wasted a bunch of our ability to actually record during nighttime, but regardless, we press forward. So I believe, as I was saying, these will allow us to artificially increase the amount of starlight in our starlight crafting altar, making it so we do not have to rely solely on environmental starlight, which is great because not everyone has the option to do that. Now, these are just the first of many options to actually do that, but you're going to need higher starlight levels to reach those later and better options. So these might be a necessary evil to set up to get to the more useful stuff later on. Now, before we actually jump into the crafting for the episode, and thankfully there's not much, I do want to go over something that some of you very observant people may have noticed, and that's that stuff around here looks a little bit different than last episode. And that is because I decided that it was time for us to actually have it look a little bit nicer around here. Every series, I try to at least make some sort of a base for the area we're working in. And because we have to do so much work under the stars, I decided that we wouldn't actually make a base and instead do just this sort of outside area that utilizes way too much marble. Uh, and it's been referenced as sort of a Roman garden looking area, I guess. Uh, I guess with all the marble, that's probably a pretty accurate way to describe it although it doesn't have any shrubbery in here but regardless let me know what you guys think of this because I think it looks pretty cool and we will be further expanding upon this in later episodes to continue you know incorporating everything in and keeping it looking nice assuming you guys actually like it uh, now unfortunately due to the delays from all those annoying guys we really don't have much nighttime left to do some crafting but for the crafting materials that are required for today's episode we are going to be making the astral relay which is going to require oak planks marble some gold nuggets and the glass lens we can find the recipe in the exploration tab or the second chapter of our astral tome right here after the fosic resonator and you can see here the exact recipe for making the astral relay and the only thing that we don't have is the glass lens and that is the other thing that we are going to have to make today actually in our starlight crafting altar which is going to require four aquamarine and then a glass pane to make the glass lens now when we're crafting for today's episode we are actually going to make twice as many glass lenses as we would need because every astral relay is going to need to hold a glass lens to be able to actually function. So you're gonna need one for the crafting and one to actually throw in it manually to let it function. Now, once we have all of those crafted, we are also going to need, much like with the Starlight Crafting Altar, to set up a little bit of a multi-block below the Astral Relay to get it to function. And that's where these blocks down here come in. So each one of these setups is going to require one sooty marble, four marble arches, and four chiseled marble. So we have 16 of the marble uh, of each type and four sooty marble because we are going to be setting up four of these on each side of the Starlight Crafting Altar, 
And if you're curious what the setup actually looks like on the Astro Relay page, if we go past the actual recipe, you can see the setup right here. Now we can see right here the actual blocks that it requires as I just described. And you can see that it technically is a three by two by three, but that's just with the Astro Relay sitting on top of the center block. And then you need to get these to function by putting a glass lens in the Astro Relay. So super simple to actually get it working, but there's a lot of things that you need to take into consideration to actually get these to work efficiently and make good use of them. So unfortunately, it is now daytime, and so we are gonna have to wait until nighttime to actually be able to do some of this crafting. And I keep forgetting to add in the mod that you guys keep recommending to be able to, I believe it's like lay down in a hammock to make it nighttime. So exactly the opposite of a bed for series like this where we need it to be nighttime. But I'm probably going to hop off camera. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, that was lucky that I turned around there. Um, but I'm probably going to hop off camera, let it become nighttime, and then we can hop back, do the astral crafting for this, and then we can set these bad boys up. Okay guys, so we are back. It is almost nighttime now, which means that our starlight crafting altar is starting to get some starlight in here. And thankfully, if we look at the astral tome, both of these recipes, which can even be made in the luminous crafting table since they only require the basic three by three crafting grid, they're gonna require very minimal amounts of starlight. So we should be good to go on making both of these. So I didn't even grab out all the stuff that we need. So if we grab all this stuff out, we can even grab out the additional blocks. We can first make our crafting for the glass pane, and we'll be making eight of those. So we'll just right click with the resonating wand, and we should get all eight pretty quickly. So there we go, we have the glass lenses, and now we should be good to make the astral relay, which we can just search that up. And I bet, okay, it's right here. So there we go. And we're only gonna be making four of these, one for each of the setups we're doing. And we should be good to make those too. So there we go. Now we have all that we need to actually set this up. A quick note for those of you who did not watch the prior episodes, but a very easy trick to getting the specific types of marble that you need for this. In this case, we need the marble arch and the chiseled marble. And obviously these have crafting recipes, but you're gonna get a very specific amount if you don't wanna waste any marble. A very easy way to do it is to make the stone cutter, and then you can simply put your marble in here and pull out the exact quantity of the exact type that you need. So definitely super useful when you're doing setups like this. So now that we have everything we need, we're gonna start by setting up just a single one of these, going over the mechanics behind how it works, and then we'll go into explaining how to set up multiple and make sure that they are as efficient as they can possibly be. So the first thing you need to know is there is a maximum distance from your starlight crafting setup that these can be and still connect and transfer starlight. And that's going to be 16 blocks from the center block if it's something like the starlight crafting altar or just directly below something like the luminous crafting table. Uh, so that's going to be the block below it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So right here, I already cleared out an area, but this is going to be the farthest away that we can go from our starlight crafting setup and still transfer the starlight to it. And you don't need to worry if it extends a little bit past that with the multi-block, you just need to make sure that the central block that actually has the astral relay placed down on it is going to be at the 16 block mark or closer. So another thing you need to know is that if there are multiple starlight crafting setups within that 16 block range, it is going to automatically connect to whichever one is closer. It can only be hooked up to one of them and it's not going to disperse the starlight between the two. So I don't really know why you would have that many so close together, but if you do, that's something you need to keep in mind when you're actually setting these up. And thankfully you do not need to manually link these together. It's going to automatically detect the closest one or if there's only one, it's going to detect that as long as it's within the range and it will automatically connect and you will get a super cool particle effect that's gonna let you know if you properly set it up or if it's not close enough or anything like that. So now we can go start setting this thing up and to do it, it's very simple. We're simply going to put down our chiseled marble in the four corners, 
Then we're going to grab out our marble arches, and those are going to go between the chiseled marble on all four sides. And then lastly, the sooty marble goes right in the center. So there is our three by three that gets set up below it. And then lastly, we simply put down the astral relay and then throw the glass lens in it. So by right clicking, we place it in there. Obviously it takes it out of our inventory because you're actually putting the item in here. Uh, if you were to, huh? That's super weird. Is that a visual bug? Yeah, okay. I was going to say, we right-clicked on it, and with these in our hand, uh, if we were to right-click on it, it should pull it out. But we had a little bit of a visual bug there where it looked like it pulled it out and it didn't. But if you right-click on it, you can pull it out. So if you accidentally right-click with some other item, which will be put in here, uh, you can still get it back out and simply replace it with the glass lens. Now, one thing to note is that it needs to be the glass lens. So many people accidentally use something like, if I look at the recipe, um, I can't remember what it's called, but people, a lot of people accidentally use the crystal lens. So this is not used for that. I've seen multiple posts on Reddit where people accidentally use the crystal lens instead of a simple glass lens. Trust me, it's so much easier to just use the glass lens. It's way cheaper. Uh, so make sure you're using that if it's not working. Really one of the easier things to check. But if it's working, you will know right away because it's going to look exactly like it does right now with these very vibrant particle effects that are going to go straight towards the starlight crafting setup that it is giving its starlight to. Now, if you are getting these particle effects, but they're just kind of dissipating into the air directly above it, that means that there is not a starlight crafting setup within the 16 block range that it can send stuff to automatically. But if we look over here, we can see that we are now at full starlight levels and it's not even fully midnight yet. So we can already see a very drastic improvement from where we were before, but that's with only one of these. A lot of you guys may need multiple of these in your setup if you don't have the super high environmental starlight levels like we do here. And we can still find it useful to set up multiple because in situations where it's just become nighttime or it's about to not be nighttime anymore, our starlight levels will still be higher then, even though they won't be totally at max for a longer period of time if we have more of these. So if we want to get more bang for our buck when it comes to nighttime, then we should definitely set up multiple. And this is where one of the most important mechanics of artificial starlight addition comes in, which is starlight cannibalism. And this happens with anything that artificially adds in starlight, where if you have them next to each other, they are going to have severely diminished returns and be way less efficient. So you could actually place down another one of these astral relays and make a spectral relay directly next to this. You could even use these chiseled marble and marble arch blocks right here as part of the other setup where your sooty marble would be right here and your astral relay would be right here. So one block away and it would connect, but you would get almost nothing from this because you have it so close to another one that you're not going to be able to harness any additional starlight, which makes sense. Obviously, this is harnessing additional starlight in a smaller but similar fashion to our current setup over here. And if you have one really close to it, this starlight's already being harnessed. So what's this one going to get right here? Now, to avoid this, a very simple setup that people do is by setting it up in all four directions as we have here. So one over here, one over there, one over there. And in this case, you can get four of them put down where they are not interfering with any of the other ones and you are having to be 100% efficient and get you the max amount of starlight possible. And over here, this will actually be a very good opportunity to show you guys another pitfall that comes along with these. So. If we were to set this one up, we put down our marble arches and then we put down our chiseled marble on the corners, just like we did before. Super easy multi-block, put down the astral relay and then we put down the glass lens. You can see that right here, we have blocks directly above this. So this is something that we definitely do not want. So we are going to want to hop up and actually get rid of these. So we can grab some dirt right out here and we'll just go up on this side and hopefully we have enough blocks to actually get up here and get rid of these uh, but we can just mine these away right up here so that we don't have anything sitting over our spectral relay setup and obviously you know this is bound to happen if you're setting stuff up next to a mountain or something like we currently are so hopefully there's not too many blocks further up here that we have to get rid of 
because I am running out of stuff to build up with. We might need to bust out some of this cobble, too. Okay. There we go. There we go. We should be good. We'll get rid of this one, too, just to be safe. Make sure we got sufficient access to the nighttime sky over here. And now we can head back down. And you can already see that it is now having its particles going towards the center again. So another way to troubleshoot it is to go right on it if it's not sending them over and look straight up. Does it have access to the sky? You don't need to have a huge area cleared out. You simply need just the blocks above this very central astro relay block to have access to the sky, much like the initial crystals that we worked with in the uh, shrines. So now we can come over here and looks like we might have to fight another guy. One of the downsides of having to have it always be nighttime. Um, but we can set this one up really quick over here. Again, super easy to set up. So there's not really any downside to making a bunch of these. And this one should have no issues at all. It should immediately be able to start sending particles in here. And if we come and look, it's almost daytime, but we actually have decent starlight levels even though it's almost day. Now what we can do is set up the last one over here with our remaining blocks and we'll pull out the last astral relay and there we go. So you can see this one again also has no issue connecting. I think these look super awesome. Uh, it's why I wanted to set up multiple of them anyway, just because, you know, for, for symmetry's sake, but also because I think they look super cool. And it will make it so that we can have way more crafting ability at night with higher requirements so that it makes it easier to record. And again, for those of you who are in areas where you do not have as much environmental starlight, you're definitely going to need a bunch of these. So put these to good use. Just make sure you don't put them too close together where they start having diminishing returns and have the starlight cannibalism mechanic, which is something that plenty of people seem to forget. I really cannot urge you know, strongly enough to not put them directly next to each other on top of the fact that I think it just kind of looks gross. I've seen setups where they actually just put these one after another, after another, all the way around their setup. And I honestly don't even think it looks that good. I think this looks way cooler, but I think it's going to be it for today, guys, not a ton of stuff to cover, but now we have access to a ton of starlight. Hopefully you do too. And we can go on with crafting some super awesome stuff in the future. And I just want to say for you guys to let me know what you think of the new, I don't really want to call it a base, but the new setup around here uh, and how you think it looks both, you know, with and without the Astro Relays. Obviously, we got a little bit of excessive particle effects coming right here, so we might need to turn those down from where we're actually recording, but I super, I, I'm super thrilled with how it turned out. Uh, so again, let me know what you guys think, and I will talk to you later.